man on the planet, the UFC heavyweight title is on the line. DC, you may want to retire before this guy becomes the number one heavyweight contender. Francis Ngannou, the power threat, born in Cameroon, raised in France, and he's carved out quite a nice niche here thus far in the UFC. Yes, he has. Very scary fighter. The knockout reel of Francis Ngannou is crazy, and the names now are starting to pile up. When you can knock out Alistair over in Curtis Blades and Cain Velasquez, people will take notice. It's just this confidence and this calmness about Francis that makes him even scarier than all of his physical attributes is his ability to really stand in there and know that it only takes one shot and he could be wearing a UFC championship. And UFC 218 was so good that that knockout of Alistair Overeem did not even earn Francis Ngannou a bonus. Wow, that's insane. Don't that's shoot, not true. Don't shoot the message. I will shoot the message. Don't shoot Ngannou, but come right through <laughs> it. Well, a lot of people think it's the most significant title in combat sports. No argument from me. Baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion. There he is in the flesh. What an absolute monster. What a title reign it has been. But a serious challenge in front of him here tonight. When this man became the heavyweight champion, a lot of people thought that this challenger was the one who would wrest the belt away. Now the fight is here. We'll see if we get a new champion or if this man continues one of the greatest heavyweight legacies the Octagon has ever seen. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. Ngannou is six years his senior. He weighed in at 250 pounds each. He will have a two-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the particulars, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold-out Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. It's time! Five rounds! Ready. You ready to fight? All right, here's round one of this UFC Heavyweight Championship fight. The baddest man on the planet. There he is in the flesh. He has defended this title in the past. And despite the fact that this has been a belt that has changed hands quite a bit, not since this man has held it down. We'll see if he can keep his championship legacy going here tonight. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the gentleman. All right, here we go with round one. Prevailing wisdom is he's going to try to set up a takedown here early and ultimately get to some of those ground strikes. He's definitely wanting to get on a shot right away. This guy knows exactly what he is at his core, and he uses it as effectively as anyone who's seen in the octagon. Well, no surprise, he goes for the takedown there, unable to get the fight to the canvas. This is a testament to a quick entry to get man, him on a single. That was a great single. Oh. Take the floor wide, slams him on his back. What a takedown. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Ooh, what a head kick. Went for the inside leg kick. Oh, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it. Now he's got a good bag. Oh! Big shots exchanged in the pocket there. Liver kick. If you take those kicks, it's gonna shut your body off. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Oh, look at him land another jab there. He's certainly using that weapon effectively here. The most effective weapon in all of boxing, in all of combat sports, is a jab. This young man has the knowledge of using it like no one else. And Gano gets caught with that punch. Combination lands for him. It was hard to see a miss in that sequence. He's put it all together. I mean, everything is just flowing. It's like in a zone. It's like the basketball who becomes quiet.
wife who tries. This guy today is looking at focus fence in his opponent. All right, so the strike lands, but my my children hit him. <laughs> yeah, at this point, early in the fight, he saw it. They able to work it in with the takedown. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song. Nowadays, you see guys just throwing little shots that don't really matter. Very few guys now are committed to ground and pound as they were in the past. So he's really starting to put together some... Oh, man, look what that one body shot did. That shows the power. And the power is the placement. It was placed perfectly, and now he's got his corner. How about those five minutes? All right, let us now look back at some of the highlights from that round, and there just aren't that many guys on this roster that can keep up this offensive wrestling pace over 15 or 25 minutes. But he's one of those guys. He is one of those guys that's able to continuously take you down even if you get up over and over. He has this ability to maintain that pace and pressure that he can wear his opponents down. That's why you see him get so many finishes as the fight progresses. Well, he certainly had his way with his opponent in that previous round, and with this guy, even when you know what's coming, sometimes it's still just hard to stop it. Yes, because he's always changing up. The first time, it may be a high crotch injury. The second time, you may get single. Third time, it may be double. Ultimately, it always leads to him in the top position trying to find space for his ground and pound. Man, he's timing his shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing in Tom Brady. Stop it, John. Stop it. Oh, continuing to work the body to great effect. Oh, huge left hand from Francis Ngannou. Every time he loads up and extends, you feel like the fight might be ending. Yeah, absolutely. And the whole crowd holds their breath. Right. right? You hear a big exhale. Every time Francis loads up to finish the fight, you hear the crowd take all the air in because yeah. they're ready to explode. That's the type of performer, that's the type of fighter that Francis is. Big ball punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Oh, tags him with that money left again. Straight right is there. Big and kick. And a nice left hand there on the inside. Oh! Nice big takedown. What a technique. What a takedown. Great high impact skill. You could feel the canvas reverberating here. The I mean, it's right there. Bo -bo 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 -bo. It's like me running anywhere, John. <laughs> Ngannou's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Oh, solid leg kick. Those are going to really start to take their toll. Man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace at message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Oh, significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Ooh, what a punch. Nice jab, follows it up with a nice right hand. You can really limit the mobility of your opponent with those leg kicks. Oh, how about the right hand? And from Francis and Gano, it's hard to pass the wheels off. You watch Francis put out an entire generation of heavyweight that came before him. Put out Wolverine, put out Velasquez, put out Don Santos, and he did it all with that beautiful right hand. It is one of the deadliest weapons in all of his martial arts. Good stick. Good series of strikes by him there. Great job of mixing it up, staying active, keeping busy, doing great work. Oh, nice straight there. I guess that's the quickest way to the target, right? Just throw straight. Straight down is always best. Oh. All right, round three coming up next. All right, some highlights for you now on that previous round, DC. Those body kicks were so good, I kind of felt like I got the wind knocked out of me from one. I have been on the receiving end on some nasty body kick, right? And all you want to do is start to carry your hands lower. Problem with that is the kicks start to look like they're going to go high. He's got to make an adjustment to change something, or this fight is going to continue to go down the same path.
All right, here we go as our next round gets underway. His strong leg packs so much power that even when he doesn't throw it full throttle, you see he's able to inflict damage. We'll see if he can keep it going. Here. He doesn't throw it full power, but even when he faints it, he draws out reactions from his opponents because they don't want to get hit with any more of those kicks. It's a sight to behold. Great punch landing with so much power. Oh, combination lands. You want to talk about putting strikes together. Beautiful execution. And every one of them are landing. He's overwhelming him with different attacks. Well, not only has he stayed aggressive as... The Predator gets absolutely pelted by that head kick. Timing his shots pretty well here early, DC. Being very accurate. Well, he continues to find the openings tonight. Beautiful connection with the That one appeared to stun him. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Shot double leg. Oh, he'll slam him down to the ground. Well done. All right, north-south position here. We'll see if the crowd can be mature about this, DC. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. He's attacking arm bar now. He might get a finish here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. He loaded up on that right hand too. And got a slower job, very swollen now. Time to bite down on the mouthpiece and move forward. Well, he has certainly found the range and staying pretty busy here on the feet. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. Oh, he got absolutely bludgeoned. That's as good a combination as we have seen out of him here tonight. The last time I saw a combination this good, it was Donald Cerrone beating up on Rick Story. Beautiful strike. All right, he engages in a single follow tie here, and they separate. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Oh, look at that jab. Snapped his head back. His jab gets to the target so fast, it always brings his hand right back to his face. That jab is fast. Look at that jab. All right, so there's the end of the round. He stayed committed to doing damage upstairs and landed a seminal blow in that round. It was accumulation of those strikes. He kept hitting him over and over to the head. Eventually, he found the, the one that really did damage his opponent. All right, so here we go with our fourth round of a possible five. Yeah, you got to change it up. You have to mix things up because fighting for an extra six minutes is not normal. Guys don't do this normally. It's a 15-minute fight. So you have to do things physically and also mentally to make sure that you're ready to go that extra 10 minutes. Nice punch lands over the top. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Oh, nice right hand, John. Oh, that is an uppercut from hell. Beautiful job by him there. I mean, he threw that thing from his hip and he landed with all the force that he could muster. I'm surprised he didn't knock him out with that punch. Oh, an obvious limp there. His leg hurting for certain. Trying to double up on that jab. Big kick land. Still unable to find that precise range with the high kick. Nice single leg in. Rotates ahead outside to the high crotch. All right, we're
working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in these jujitsu guys' guard. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys will start throwing up legs, chasing triangles. Back mount now. He's gonna start looking to try to attack a rear naked choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. Just took the body triangle, readjust the lock, and now it looks like he's got it. Wow. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. If you're on the bottom, you got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal Whoa! or a slip. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to push. He's got to go change that finish. Doubles up on the jab. Man, the body work really starting to take its toll here. Obvious redness on that right side. Visibly limping here. Look at how he turned his hip into that leg. South position now. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. Oh, he might be in trouble here after that big diving punch. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Side control now. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Francis and Ghana. Just over three minutes. Now the guy's go got on bar. He's attacking it on it. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. And this might just be a matter of time. side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control? Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. Keep flowing than having something like a half guard. Beautiful punch. Double it up on the jab. Well, he's been pretty accurate tonight. He's landed some significant in strikes, but his corners look as if the mix like just throw more volume. Because they don't see too much of a threat. This guy has to have confidence in knowing. Wow. Separate. 
lands a stiff punch there. Nice connection. Oh, nice land. All right, so they came in unquestionably the two best in the world in this division, and they showed you exactly why here tonight. A lot of people may think the challenger did enough for me, slightly into the champion to retain his title. I agree with you, John. I thought the champion did just enough to keep his belt. And this has nothing to do with you got to beat the champ to get the belt. No, the champion outworked him in the big spot, and he should retain his title. All right, so there is the horn. That means the round is over. We nearly had a finish due to a submission, but I think you got to give credit to both the offense and the defense. There. Yeah, you got to give credit to both guys, but nothing's more beautiful than an extended grappling exchange like we just witnessed. One guy almost submitted, one guy escaping. It's one of the most exciting things you can watch in all of mixed martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 50-44. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, and still the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Anna. So there he is, and still the baddest man on the planet. The undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world. It wasn't everyone's expectation that it would go the full 25 minutes here tonight, but what 